I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and again, as always, appreciate you spending some time. We, we do know that there are those that view on a consistent, regular basis, and we appreciate that so much. Last week, we, or last time, we got to meet Christine Peed, mm -hmm. Peed. Yep. and today we get to meet her daughter. Jamie, thank you for coming and sharing your story. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, this is this will be fun. This is awesome. Now, were you born here in Salt Lake? No, I was actually born in Provo. Oh, you were? Okay. Yeah. Family was living down there for a while. Huh? Yeah, we actually moved all over. Um, <laughs> my dad joined the Air Force when I was a baby, so we were um, in... Uh, uh, Stationed around different yes. places. Well, huh? Yeah, we went. My I lived in Turkey for two years when I was a child. Oh, really? So yeah. okay. So were they active in the church? I mean, you were. My parents they were, were married, married in the temple. They were married in the Provo Temple. Yeah. Um, my dad served an LDS mission to New York. Okay. And um, we they were pretty active at one point. There's times in their lives they had ebbs and flows where they weren't active and then not. <laughs> Kind of hard when you're moving around too a lot, I guess. And yeah, we, not a lot we of, lived all over the state. So yeah. Yeah. Now the time in Turkey, was that, uh, were there any other members there then? Um, I, I was really young at the time. Oh, you were so a child. Okay. I was like one to three years old. I mean, that's probably not too many uh, wards there in Turkey. No, and I, I, never, I don't I remember would... a whole lot of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> So then, uh, you, you, I guess you go to primary and yeah, I was I was things? active in primary and I was very active in neutral. Um, yeah. I had I was behind pre president, also my maid president, and I was world president. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so you were active. <laughs> yeah, I was active up yeah. until the time I was sixteen. And then you were seminary. You took seminary. I took so. seminary. I ended up graduating from seminary. Oh, good for you. Now I also understand you went and you did baptisms for the dead. I did. Um, that was actually kind of a weird experience. Um, yeah, tell us about that. It was actually, when I went and did it, I kept getting dunked over and over, and then we did confirmations, and it made me feel like, is this really from God? And it was just a thing that, in my head, I was like, I don't think this is from God. I don't think it's what God wants me to do. It was like, it didn't it didn't feel right as far as the path, what I thought. I was supposed to feel this ex magical experience or something, but it never happened. And it... it my wife and I talked about it, Carla and I talked about this uh, when we were going through your, and you mentioned that you'd got done baptisms for the dead. And we both kind of admitted that it was, it felt cold and hollow and the voices just kind of bounced off the walls and there was this yeah, water I, feeling. Did you sense all that I too? felt more of an oppression. Like it wasn't, it was just like, it was something that we had to do. It was, we were going through the motions. It was just something yeah. that we were taught that we were supposed to do. Yeah. And I thought, I thought it was going to have this um, spiritual experience, and it never it wasn't very cheery, was it? No, it was. It was. I was. It was more of a depression state, and it's like, do these people really want us to do this work? Are they really, you yeah. know? Well, they're Mormons that think that they actually come into those rooms and watch themselves, or you know, watch the proxy being done for them, so that they, yeah, and, and then, then whatever happens, they get to walk into the presence of the Lord or something. I yeah, and there's a scripture in the Bible where it says, "Let the dead bury the dead." So, yeah, interesting. You know. <laughs> and this is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Yep. Uh, you had a couple of other experiences in seminary uh, that you you at least shared with me. Did you want to share a couple of those? Yeah. Um, one of them was um, when I was 16. I was a I was a sophomore. Yeah. And I was 16 years old, and I, they brought out this casket, and, and they were, like, recreating Joseph Smith's funeral. And I didn't know exactly, it was just kind of a weird, eerie feeling at that time. And really? I, was, I was sitting up front, and I'm just like, um, I'm going to go to the back. And I started just to read through the Bible, 
and I opened to Isaiah, and then I opened the Book of Mormon to Mosiah. And I don't know how that happened, a 16-year-old opening up this that never really read the Bible or the Book of Mormon, Mormon. really. Yeah. And and how I opened up to that thing. And I just really believed that God was with me. And I noticed it was word for word, copied straight. I, um, Isaiah was copied straight in the book of Mosiah from the King James Bible. Isn't that funny? And yeah. Now I didn't know that originally either. And I understand now that it's this, that was the family's Bible from 1769 or something. And it's been, tra or been put right into the book of Mormon with its own errors. Mm -hmm. with the errors that it had, and it was copied into the Book of Mormon, so it has the same errors as this 1769 edition of the Bible, yeah, which it, is virtually impossible, of course, if it's being translated. Yeah, it, it just it just did not make sense to me. And I, and I said, I, I asked my friend, and I, I, I said, I, my good high, uh, high school friend, and I, um, Carla, and she was like, I go, did you think seminary, seminary was weird when they did that whole program and they were like creating Joseph Smith's funeral? No, she goes, it was really spiritual. And I go, well, I just didn't feel anything. It felt weird, awkward, and it just didn't feel right. And then um, shortly after that, I just kind of kind of stopped going to mutual. I stopped going to church. Oh, did um, you really? Yeah. Now, you had a testimony, you said, of Joseph Smith. And, I did. Um, I mean, when I was a teenager, b before that experience, yes, I did have a, a testimony of Joseph Smith. I thought he was a prophet of God. I thought he walked on water. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> or could have, anyway, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so so this was pretty pretty traumatic. I mean, something uh, or dramatic for you. It was, and it was really traumatic. When, and this... Um, yeah was kind of around the same time my mom was always having questions and she was always say the book mormon doesn't make sense it doesn't fit any anything in the there's no archaeology there's or no something. archaeology <laughs> there's nothing for it my mom always had questions and it caused fights between my mom and my dad a lot yeah well so did you uh then you say you quit going to church then about that time was she were you saying she had also kind of quit going or yeah i think yeah. my parents and my dad was never really um the most spiritual person he was kind of just he went with the flow he did what everybody else told him to do and i and i just don't think it, it yeah by that time my mom was you know going off and on but not, not a whole lot regularly huh? yeah so did you um uh, have any other real questions about the church? I mean, did you did you just feel uncomfortable at the at church, or did you really sense that there was something wrong with the doctrine? And um, this so is on? Uh, through that experience, I began to study, uh -oh. and and <laughs> that's, not, that's not good, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. And I began to look up, and I saw that the temple had Masonic things, and I just began to just do my own studying, and I just began to. Um, and then when I found out the church wasn't true through that study and I got through a real depression time. And Did you really? Yeah. It was hard. You didn't. And I, yeah. It uh, felt like the, it, it, it kind of like the rugs being pulled out from under us, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it, it was like, it was like a total shock to me and I didn't know how to handle it, handle that at that time either. So. Well, what was your moment of saying, okay, I don't believe the church is true. What kind of tipped you over the edge? Do you, anything specific? Um, it was a Bible verse, actually. My mom was doing all this studying between, you know, I was 16 to 20. Yeah. And, and all this other stuff that was going on, she was doing, you know, all this research and, and there was this Bible verse that she brought up to me, and I just didn't really want anything to do with God at this time. <laughs> Between like 16 and 23 years old, I just didn't want anything to do with Him. And what was? Do you remember the verse or what the? It was a, it was a Bible verse from Galatians, and it says, "If if we or an angel teach any other gospel, let him be accursed." <laughs> And that's when all that just started to go into a moment where I just started to know that I needed, I needed God in my life, and I just began to re read the Bible from the Book of John, yeah, and where it says that God came down as, as a man to redeem us, it to, in incarnate, and he he was the, yeah, oh you're right, I'm some first, oh no, you're fine, um, and in John where he and he said the word. 
became Came flesh, flesh and dwelt among, among us. us. Well, that Galatians verse you mentioned is one that really was important to me because then I said, well, what is what gospel was it that Paul taught? You know, because if he says, I'm, if, if, if anybody preaches anything other than what I've taught, let, let him, him be, be a curse. curse. So I thought, well, what does Paul taught? So then I had to go back, and re which I hadn't really concentrated on as a Mormon at all, but I went back and started reading Romans and all of his letters and what he actually said. And did. He didn't talk anything about temples and marriage for time and all eternity. No, or, and... And it didn't. It was all about grace and, and was, what Jesus did for us. It was all. It was all about. It was all about the grace, and it talked about. It was. It was all about God's grace, and that's all the Bible's about. It's even in the Old Testament. It's yeah. all about God's grace and Him, always being with His people. And I always just believe that through that experience in seminary was the leading point for me to know who Jesus truly was, and it's been a long adventure. Um, since that time, I'm now 35 years old. I've <laughs> you're learning and learning and learning. Huh? I'm learning and learning about God's grace and how to love other people more and more every day. Yeah. And um, it, it, your life has ebbs and flows where you go from God and then come back. It you go into your own like Israel did in the wilderness and all that other stuff. But God is grace is significant, and that's all that that's all that I want to do in sharing my story is that it's all about God and that. No matter what we do, we can never be good enough. And it says in Romans, for we, for we all fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. And if it isn't, if it, if we all fall short, how can we become like God? Yeah. And it, it, and through all this studying and reading the Bible, I become to know that the truth that Jesus is God. And, and isn't that a wonderful, simple message of, yeah, of what the gospel is? And as a Mormon. There's a certain pride, don't you think, that goes in with earning our way? Uh, I used to believe when I was, I became, because I was BI president, I was my mate president, I was Laura president, I became really, really, you really thought, thought you were I, doing it all, right? I thought, I thought I was, I thought I was better than other people. And I really thought because I was a Mormon and I was trying to do everything right, that I was better. I know that's a, it's a sad thing, but there's a, a pride there that we, f we feel. Yeah, you become very prideful. Yeah, and judgmental. Yeah, and I mean, you, yeah, you find and out somebody's drinking coffee or something, you, or not wearing their garments or something. You know, <laughs> it, you're so judging of that. Yeah, and then, and then I never really got through the temple <laughs> as far as that goes, as far as baptisms for the dead. Yeah. Because by the time I was 20, I was doing my own thing. I was yeah. partying, I was drinking, and I oh. just didn't really want to believe in that before I came to know the Lord in the Bible. So what ha what brought you kind of to, to the Lord, so to speak? I mean... Did you end up going to a church? I ended up going to uh, Calvary Chapel. But that was after you had your little period of... Uh, Rebellious space, re yeah. <laughs> So we don't need to go into all that, I suppose, but what kind of, what brought you out of that? I mean, sometimes for some people, that, that can last for decades, you know? <laughs> um, what brought what me happened? out of that is because there was there was a certain situation that happened, and... And there was just, I felt God there, even in the midst of that, saying, you're better than this. Oh. You're better than this. You and knew he loved you. I knew that God loved me, and I just, that's when I gave my life totally to him. <laughs> I'll bet that was thrilling for your mom. <laughs> it was. I was I was 23, and I just... Did you go to her and tell her? Yeah. What'd she say? <laughs> She just was smiling and happy and couldn't stop <laughs> hugging me and couldn't stop crying. Yeah, I think that would be a, a moment for any of a, a parent if they, especially where they were so faithful in raising you as a Mormon and then uh, realize that they made a mistake. You know, that's kind of where I'm at with a couple of my kids. I realized that I was uh, raised them being taught Mormonism. And now I, I realize that wasn't Jesus at all. But uh, anyway, so mom was pretty excited, huh? Yeah. Now dad, probably not so much. <laughs> no, my dad went um, through um, some rough periods and stuff. Now he's more into a form where he's accepting. 
Really? Oh, good. Yeah, he's able in, to talk to him a little bit, huh? Yeah, well, a little maybe, bit. You can talk to him a little bit. <clears throat> maybe you have to. Maybe he'll get to watch this and tell him how much you love him. And, <laughs> I do love my dad, and I yeah. love my mom, and I, and I'm so grateful that um, my sisters were able to come out as well, and that they've told, um, gave their life to the Lord. Yeah. You know, one thing that's different about my wife and I, I think we went our first 40 or so years of marriage without merely talking religion, and now that's all we talk about almost. I mean, there are other, few other things, but it's just all about that. And so you're able to do that with mom, and mm -hmm. that's pretty wonderful. Huh? So how was it the first time you went to a Christian church? Do you remember that? I remember it was kind of different for me because um, I, people were um were worshiping god and it was all about god and when i was a mormon um it wasn't about jesus it wasn't about what he done for you on the cross and no no one could ever really ex explain that and but i forgot to actually tell you um in high school i had this friend who was a baptist mm -hmm. and she would always ask ask us questions about our faith and said you, you as Mormons don't understand what the cross is. And I would just totally like blow her off and all that other stuff. She was still my friend, but. Yeah, but, but you didn't take anything that she said as very important, I guess. No, and by then she had moved away by the time I had that experience when I was in seminary. Have you ever you been able to talk to her again? Um, I wish I could talk <laughs> could to her call again. Her up and <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could um, track her down. Um, I haven't been able to track her down, but um, I hope she knows through this video that I've come to know the Lord now. Yeah, I guess what? I wear a cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Mormons don't wear crosses, do they? No. Well, you said that uh, to me earlier that something about crying in, in the first time you went to a church. and It's, yeah. it's pretty emotional, isn't it? For yeah, and I just felt like God was speaking to me there that, that I could um, leave away the path that I had before. Yeah. Um, realizing that, you know, it, it wasn't going to help me into that that time frame through that depression that I went through and the drinking and all that other stuff I was going through. Yeah. And God found you and so Jesus means a little bit more to you now than as a Mormon <laughs> and <laughs> he, as a Mormon. Oh man, he means more than anything to me. He's given me the grace and and the love to love other people um, yeah. larger than myself. And I think I think this is in me, like if you really think about the realm of everything that's going on, I think right now we're so busy casting stones at one another to really sit down and really love that person for who they are. And I yeah. think, I think, I think now is more than time ever to realize that's why I wanted to share my story is because Jesus is the way and he's the only way to get to go, to go home, to be yeah. with him. And if we don't love like he did when he was here, we have nothing like it says in First Corinthians. We're nothing. That's so true, and he did it all for us because he loved us. And yeah. You you wrote to me something I thought was interesting. You said we put as Mormons we put God in a box. Yeah. What What do you mean by that? We put him in to where we can become like Jesus. We can become like him. And and we don't. We put him in, a, we limit who God truly is. We don't realize that he's the creator of all the universe. He created everyone in here. And he loves us just as much as the the homeless guy down the street or yeah, or the richest person on this earth. Yeah, I just, it struck me when you said that because I, I think there's a scripture that talks about uh, a the uncorruptible God mm -hmm. worship, uh, and then also the uh, creature. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm messing that up. But worship the creature more than the Creator, and yeah. I think that's what we've done in Mormonism. We've set people ahead. We've we actually believe that we can become like God, or mm -hmm. that we can become a God, yeah. and that God was once a man. And that's just blasphemy, Hannah. Yeah, so. and like you were saying, that God's the Creator. Jesus is the creator of all things. Yeah, he is. They, they're, they're just one and the same. Um, I. It's just, it's just amazing how we, we even limit God as a Christian too, and, and he's just. In what way do you think? Um, 
I think sometimes we go through times in our lives where we think that we can't put our full trust in him at times and we sometimes just you know question that just our human nature yeah, to, human nature and even um, as, even even as christians some some christians feel i think that they have to be working mm -hmm. get and doing we, that little extra to get a couple of bonus points or something i don't know i but. think sometimes we all both get caught in the trap that's why my compassion for mormons is the same because yeah because they're just they're just like us wanting to know who god truly is and i think yeah. sometimes we get so trapped in the way we live a certain way, we get comfortable, and we don't dare to step outside that realm. Yeah, but we love Mormons, right? And I love them so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got family that are Mormon, and I, I do. do too, and you just, it's sad that we divide over, over that, but you, you do wish, and once I think our eyes are open, we want to share. We yeah. want people to understand, and it's such a simple <laughs> message, isn't it, that, that Jesus is God, and he came down, and took on flesh and well we're getting close to time here all, already anything you want to say to your family or your friends or um, your good friend from years ago <laughs> <laughs> hey Lori I just want to let you know that I've come to know the Lord and um, you had an impact on my life and you planted a seed um, I also want to tell all my friends and family that are Mormon that I love you and I'm doing this to share my story and my testimony of how I came out of Mormonism. And I love you, and I hope you come to the know the true God <laughs> of the Bible. And I'm praying for you. Now, you've done some Bible studies and stuff too, right? Yes. How, how's that gone? Um, I meet with a, a great group of ladies that I've been meeting with for years, and we've had great Bible studies. And they're all Christian, are they? Oh, they're all Christian. Um, yeah. You go through books, or do you do, um, go through topics, or how we do you go, do that? We go through topics. Sometimes we watch um, videos of pastors, of pastors and stuff that, that go through the Bible. That go through the Bible. You know, it's funny. I used to be a Sunday school teacher. Well, several times, gospel doctrine teacher, and of course we teach the New Testament once a year, or once every mm -hmm. four years. <laughs> And most of those are tied up in the Gospels, you know, yep. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the John. And then spend a little bit of time on, in a few of the other things. But just don't really study the Bible. And here I've been in some classes or some situations, uh, Sunday school things, that we spent like two years going through Romans, you know. <laughs> it, you can spend like as, as much time in the Bible and you can learn something different from the same yeah, verse that you read like two years ago. Or some pastor will put a different spin on it or a different yeah. way to look at it. Yeah. I enjoy that so much because yeah. it it just is so interesting. And and which do you which Bible do you enjoy reading? Um, maybe um, I'll I'll um, read the New King James Version usually. Now, what's different from that and of course, Mormons typically use the King James Version. What's different? Do they use you and uh, you instead of thee and thou? Did they change, make that yeah, change? Yeah, they, they made that change to make it flow more better. But uh -huh. yeah, that's why I drew. I kind of stayed with the King James. You what? I stayed with the King James Bible. The, yeah. Well, I know some use the, there's some other English versions, you know, NIV and ESV. That, mm -hmm. and have you read any of those? Yeah. And you like those at yes. all? Or? Okay. I, I, I also read the Amplified Bible. Oh, well, I just think it's interesting, uh, you know, just to, uh, kind of tongue in cheek, but you think we've learned a lot in the last four or five hundred years about King, about Hebrew and Greek and some of the original manuscript, or not original, but... Yeah, the but Dead Sea Scrolls proved the, that the Bible's accurate. Yeah, did you, had you heard about that as a Mormon? Um, <laughs> I don't think, all as I remember as a Mormon was was uh, the Bible wasn't translated correctly and the, that's right the article of faith always went in there and that's kind of what kind of harmed me for those few years yeah that, that was like, big for me too the Dead Sea Scrolls because that kind of proved the Old Testament at least hadn't because in Mormonism it's the great and abominable church that changed it all which mm -hmm. means the Catholic Church I guess uh, you know after two or three hundred AD and, and they had that but the well, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls kind of proves that the Old Testament was is reliable, and 
hadn't been changed in Joseph nope. Smith's translation. Had you ever heard of that? In yes, I did hear about that. Um, I think they put it, put it in the as part of their version of the King James Bible, but. Um, yeah, I heard that he wrote that. It also <laughs> says in the in Revelations he makes any changes to this book. <laughs> we'll be in big trouble. <laughs> we are in big trouble if you make any changes to the Bible. Uh, well, you're a delightful young lady, and I'm, I'm proud of you for it, it. You had some insights there as a as a young person that I sure that's pretty amazing, and you can see God's hand in your life, I guess, huh? Yeah, he's he's been working in my life for 35 years, and. Um, I'm working as a CNA, and it's uh, it's a great experience for me. How has that been? You you said you get a chance to share once in a while. I do. Um, the amazing thing about um, living your life um, in your when you're working, you live you you work for God, and you <laughs> don't work for the particular company you work for. You just work for Him, and you just show show the light, and you realize how many how you they touch your life just as much as you probably touch them. And I've learned that life's about touching other people, especially when they need the help the most. Well, and people are, you probably see them when they're ill and vulnerable to, to things. And yeah. have you had any experiences that you, that you were just um, being able to share your witness? <laughs> all I can say is I've seen people um, pass away and, um, mm. and being in there and letting them know. I try as much as I can. Um, some to not do, I can share a little bit of God with them yeah. um, if they're willing to talk about it and um, if they're have willing to, let to them, pray with them. Yeah, I have, have to, to let, let them. Bring it up, and but you pray with them. and If they want me to, yes. Oh, well, that's me. That's tender, I guess, at that moment. Yeah. yeah. And family or are there family there often? And um, it's just it's just up to, up to the up to them. Yeah. Well, and you go to church over at Calvary Chapel. Um, I've been going. Or K two. I'm gonna be going to the Rock. The Rock. Okay, yeah. I knew that was one of those. How have you enjoyed that? <laughs> it's been it's been really good. Um, I've been learning. Uh, the worship's really good there. It's the pra I, I really love worship. <laughs> Why can't? Yeah, all praising Jesus, right? Yeah, I praise Jesus every day. I have to listen to Christian <laughs> music every day <laughs> to get through the day. Well, it's so different, and I know you. I know it's so different for me, and I'm sure that you've. Uh, Come to appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, gosh, I guess we're done, Jamie. All Thank right. you so much. I appreciate you coming Thanks and for sharing. Me. And, and God bless you in your life. And you too. God I bless you. I hope you're able to share, can continue sharing. And I, I guess I haven't said it for a while, but you got to know you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not <laughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, read the Bible. See ya.